Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. George sent me a note about an interesting story out of Georgia, Business Insider Reports, written by Sam Tabariti. A retired Georgia couple is fighting back against a railroad company who wants to take land their family has owned for generations. A retired Georgia couple has embarked on a battle against a private railroad company attempting to use the state's power to take land their family has owned for generations. They are among a group of landowners who partnered with a nonprofit Institute for Justice in the hope of keeping Sandersville Railroad from using eminent domain, a process that allows the state to seize land. And this has been going on for a long, long time on some level. So the government is wanting to put a road through someplace, a highway, whatever it might be. They go, oh, we need to put a road from here to here. And as they do this, they realize there's some private property in there. Well, they're going to tell you, hey, look, sorry about this, dude, but we're putting a road right across your property. We'll pay you for it, but we're going to do it. And so that makes sense to many people. I can't say most anymore, but many people. And of course, it's morphed over the years to where now the government will take this, and instead of using it themselves, uh, let a company use it. And they'll say, well, yeah, but it was still in the best interest of the state for the company to do this. And the best example, of course, is Kilo, which is a Supreme Court case where a woman's house was being taken under eminent domain, and she fought it all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. And and sadly, she lost. The U.S. Supreme Court said, oh, if, if the state wants to take your land to let a company build a factory on it, that's up to them. And the weird part is the factory never got built, but the house, I believe, did get torn down. So in this case, this couple inherited the land, which has been in their family since the 1800s, and the husband doesn't want to back down. He said, this is more than just land to our family. It's where we've shared memories, built a life for ourselves for generations. We're not going to let Sandersville just go in and take it from us. Now, there is a small rural town there, Sparta, And there's about 1,300 people who live in Hancock County, according to census data. And um, many of them, unfortunately, live in poverty. So Sandersville Railroad wants to build a rail spur so it can more easily transport materials used for making concrete from a quarry, a rock mine owned by Heidelberg Materials, which is a German building materials company, previously known as Heidelberg Cement company filed a petition with the Georgia Public Service Commission in March, requesting the authority to condemn the land owned by this couple through a process known as eminent domain. So what they do is they say your your property is condemned, and then it becomes treated as if they came by and condemned your house. But instead of being allowed to rehabilitate your house so you can live in it, they say it's condemned, get off of it, we're taking it over company said in its petition that the Hanson Spur, the rail line it wants to build, would require parcels from 18 nearby properties. Its construction would take about 15 months. It would, however, mean that residents of Sparta would have to deal with more dust and debris from the increased capacity of transportation. Now, it was reported earlier in April that some residents were already battling the company's attempt at seizing their land with the Southern Poverty Law Center. So there's actually a couple different groups helping out here. Uh, Meanwhile, a retired school teacher and Army veteran who is already active in the fight against the railroad told papers, our community is already like a dumping ground. So we're going to fight this to the end. There is no compromise. U.S. states sometimes delegate the power of eminent domain to private entities. And according to the Institute for Justice, Private companies may want to acquire land for something other than public use. Should the state of Georgia give Sandersville Railroad the authority to take the land, the couple must be fairly compensated. And of course, that's where the fight comes in. What's fair compensation for your land taken by somebody else? Money is not what these people are after, though. They simply want to keep their land. Institute for Justice has accused the railroad company of abusing eminent domain power. Uh, A senior attorney there said in a press release, taking people's private land and handing it over to a private company for the benefit of a private business isn't just wrong, it's unconstitutional and against Georgia law. He added the power to use eminent domain is limited to public uses and public is not going to use this railroad. Private businesses, neither the Constitution nor Georgia statutes permit this kind of abuse of the eminent domain power. Now, 
one couple are also part of the group fighting back. They say that this land's been in their family for years. We refuse to let a private company come take the land we hope to leave for our children and our children's children. Meanwhile, one of their cousins have also joined the fight to keep the land belongs to their great-grandmother. Uh, these people own separate parcels of land, both of which Sandersville's push for eminent domain would impact. The cousin's grandparents became owners of the land in the 1920s and always told their children to keep it in the family. The Institute for Justice told Insider that other residents who the proposal could impact could join the fight, but that only these two families are part of the lawsuit for now. Only way for Sandersville Railroad's project to work is to run its spur to the quarry by taking part of some residents' land, which representatives for the Institute to say is unreasonable. Their stated rationale is that it will take trucks off the road, but we don't accept that at face value. So they're saying, hey, look, if we build this railroad spur, it'll remove traffic from some roads of trucks that were going back and forth. A representative for Sandersville Railroads, the company disagreed with the assertions made by the Institute for Justice. He said the spur line would only make one round trip a day and it would create jobs and tax revenue for one of Georgia's poorest counties. Uh, the spur will not require the taking of anyone's home, nor will it prevent any property owner from using their pastures, hunting areas, or timbering their property. Utilizing eminent domain is not our preferred approach, but given the lack of willingness to engage from these families, we welcome clarity from the Public Service Commission and look forward to a ruling. Meanwhile, a litigation fellow with the Institute for Justice said we look forward to standing up for these property owners in their fight against the unconstitutional land grab. And one thing I got to tell you, and this is something that they do teach you in law school, is we talk about things you own, things you own. There's different things you can own, like intellectual property, for instance. Um, but we're talking about things, things, right? So there's real estate, property. That's the kind of property that you can walk around on or live on. There's also property, which is personal, things you can hold like this, okay? And um, land, land is obviously something you can own as, as real estate, real property. And now, these different classes of property all have different characteristics and so on. But one of the most important distinctions about land, and this is something that's recognized and has been recognized by the courts in Western culture going back centuries, and that is that land, land is unique. It is not fungible. If I told you I've got one acre of land that I'll trade you for one acre of yours, Sound fair? <laughs> See, my acre of land is, is a, a, a swamp uh, filled with angry wild beasts. And your acre of land is downtown in a booming city, ripe for skyscrapers to be built on it. See, land is not exchangeable like that. Land is unique. And so I can tell you of many examples of people I know who own a really cool piece of property. Okay. And I know people who own property that is so cool that other people stop and go, oh my gosh, you're the one who owns this property. That is so cool. Well, there's a property next door. Why does nobody stop next door and go, why is, you know, th th trust me, this one's cool. That one's not. And it often has to do with the features and where they're laid out and, and, and what's going on there. But it, and it's also where it is. And so it's true that you can put a price tag on anything on some levels. And so our courts, when forced to, will say, well, if we have to put a price tag on this piece of property, we can do it based on comps and so on. But that really does not compensate you for a unique piece of property that's got a history in your family, sentimental value, and you got five acres here and you can go buy five acres over there. Still not these five acres. And so there is something very, very special about real estate and property that you live on, especially if you live on it. Don't get me wrong. You could have a vacation place that's cool too. But these people live on these parcels. Many of these parcels have been in their families for generations. And I can tell you right now that I have, in the last couple of years, gone up and visited where my grandmother's house 
used to be. And where she used to live is literally off of a minor highway down a really, really ragged but semi-paved road. And then there's a dirt road that goes off of one way and ends over here. And her house used to be right there. Used to be. And I've driven by it in the last year or so and looked at it and it brought back memories to me. And there's a big, big maple tree in the backyard. And I remember climbing that tree as a little kid. Now, that piece of property, where it's located, does not have a lot of value, money-wise. And so if somebody said, you can have this acre here or this acre over here, they're the same. They're each one acre. I'd go, no, no, that one there has got the memories and so on, which you cannot be compensated for. So I understand the concept of eminent domain. And we've heard of situations before where the city wants to do something or the county or the state or the feds want to do something and they need this piece of property. And people go, well, that that makes sense for them to do what they're going to do. So just pay these people. But when a company comes along and goes, well, we'd kind of like to do something here, but these people won't sell their property to us. It's just a company. It's not the government. But they can go to the government and ask the government to force these people to sell to them. And they'll say, yeah, they'll get compensated for it. But how do you compensate them for the memories? And, and, and so on. And so there is, I also believe, something else about people in general. And that is that we do develop a concept of home. Home. Okay? Now, I've known people who've lived in 75 different places in the last five years. Okay, some people are nomadic like that. That's fine. But I think that many people, if not most, think of someplace as home. And the feeling that someplace is home to you, likewise, cannot be replaced or compensated for. And so I've known some people who've been put in homes, uh, ironically, uh, when they get older and cannot take care of themselves the way they ought to be able to. To live on their own. And the number one complaint they always have is, this is not my home. This is not my home. Where I came from was my home. And I've seen people try to make the argument, well, this is your home now. And that makes no sense. Because in their mind, where I came from was my home. That's my home. That's my home. And you can't compensate for that. You cannot compensate for that. So um, I am... Firmly behind these people and their fight. And you'll notice it involves the Institute for Justice. And I was happy to see that in the story. And I've mentioned before, and I'll put a plug for them in the description below the video for their website. Institute for Justice is a nonprofit organization that stands up and steps into fights like this. And do you know what it would cost to fight some big corporation who's got the state or the county behind them and they're trying to take your land? And many people, if they had the money, would do it, but many people can't afford to do it. The Institute steps in on cases like that, and they will help these people, and if necessary, take this up as high as it's got to go. And one thing I'll tell you, I got a very, very nice email from a gentleman yesterday. Not sure if you want me to say his name or not, but he said, Steve, based on your recommendation, I've sent some donations to the Institute for Justice. And he goes, I'm on their mailing list. And he goes, it's pretty cool the stuff they send me, because they'll send updates on the different cases they're handling and so on. And he goes, but they also mail me a magazine. <laughs> and I'd forgotten to mention this. They put out an old school magazine, you know, one that you can hold and read and sit in a chair and not have to look at a screen. And he goes, I don't know about you. He goes, I still kind of like those. So do I. So do I. I've got one sitting at my desk right now, just not this desk. So it's a great, great story and a great, great fight. But unfortunately, these people have got a long road ahead of them. But the Institute is helping them on this. So, George, thanks for sending this. Sam Tabaridi wrote this for Business Insider. A retired Georgia couple is fighting back against a railroad company that wants to take land their family has owned for generations. Questions, comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. Think about it. Hermits have no peer pressure.